Jim, take away. Thank you, Sam. Thanks very much, Chair. I'll just, just sit because um, everybody can hear us, I think, you know. Well, first of all, Chair, uh, thanks for the invite and thanks to, to Mick and the, and the Scottish Pal Palestinian Solidarity Campaign for giving me an opportunity to say a few words on uh, what we've tried to do down in Western Bank to support the Palestinian people against the brutal regime in Israel. And uh, when I was coming here tonight, uh, my mind went back to when we were talking earlier on with us, that the, the, the very clear comparisons to what happened with the apartheid regime in South Africa and how they punished the blacks uh, and it reproduced itself uh, in Palestine with the Israeli state doing exactly the same, having a, a similar type of apartheid system for Palestinians in Gaza and the West Bank. Uh, the boycott and divestment sanctions, uh, I think everybody knows, played a huge part in the downfall of uh, declaring some from South Africa and, and that brutal regime. And my generation learned a lesson, I think, through that campaign, that it will be governments uh, uh, international organisations like the World Bank or the United Nations that will change society and help people who struggle. It will be working class people in conjunction with the trade unions and other people on the left uh, to build campaigns at street level. To first of all expose what the racists uh, are up to and to expose and exploit uh, what they're doing to people across the world. So that lesson was learned by my, my generation, I think, and I think what we need to try and do is to make sure that we get that message across to this generation. There is no difference to what is going on in the Gaza, in the Gaza Strip in West Bank than there was that was going on in South Africa under the Clerks. It's a brutal apartheid regime, it's a racist regime, and we need to give it that same a level of opposition and uh, exposing to make sure that we build uh, the campaign. Uh, I think it's important that we build alliances with the trade unions as well. Uh, and a lot of the national trade unions are on the ropes at the moment because of the crisis in capitalism. Uh, but we need to rebuild that uh, again to make sure that the trade unions uh, work in, in, in uh, tangent with people in local communities and other like-minded political parties to uh, to make the case for the fall of the Israeli regime. Uh, I mean, if you look what's going on in the world at the moment, Brazil, Greece, Turkey, Portugal, there's popular uprisings of people who are not prepared to accept what capitalism has, has given them. And, and uh, we've got to be encouraged by that. We've got to try and build on that mass feeling of unfairness that capitalism brings to working class and other companies and use that in their work to expose what the, the, the brutal regime in, in, in Israel is up to in occupied Palestine, which has been quite rightly uh, quite early commented on as an effect in open prison that Israel has occupied the, the, the country. You know, and, Get back to the main council way back in 2009 when we managed to pass this resolution to boycott uh, goods from Israel. It was just after the cast lead. The mainstream media in the world called cast lead an operation. But what in fact was it was a brutal occupation of the West Bank Gaza Strip with 1,800 innocent Palestinians were murdered by the Israeli Defence Force. 1,800 people were killed. Uh, and Israel could not could not uh, project the vile nature of their organisation in the world if it wasn't for America and Britain supporting. They get the nod at every turn to do what they want to do in the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. We were appalled when we seen what happened. Everybody was in, in when the, the, the invasion took place. And we, we took the motion to the council. And we had a lot of to and fro before that with the lawyers because they were very, very cautious. But we managed to get a form of works which the lawyers and the council were comfortable with. And what we'd done 
as activists in Western Bar, as we started to lay the groundwork in the local media, write letters to the press, the local radio, going to speak to tenants groups, trade union branches, laying the groundwork uh, about what we're going to try and do. And then when we put the, the motion to the council, we had a cross-party political discussion before that. And when the motion went to the council, it was passed unanimously. It really surprised me at the time, but I think that was because we'd done the preparatory work uh, beforehand. And the key was getting the legal wording right. Uh, we'd done that. It was still, it was still quite a powerful, still quite a powerful motion. Uh, and I'll read you to It was a very brief one. The council, this council deplores a loss of life in Palestine, which now numbers well over a thousand. This council also recognises the disproportionate force used by the IDF in Palestine and agrees to boycott all, all Israeli goods as a consequence. Officers should immediately cease the purchase of any goods we cut the source, which were made or their own in Israel. Officers should also ensure that procure no new goods or produce from Israel until this boycott is formally lifted by the council. And the last part was important bit for me. Because after six months in the council, you're allowed to revisit a decision and maybe change it. If we get the words in at the end, and it means that the full council is the only, the only organisation that can overturn that motion that is still in place uh, in 2013. So, that was a breakthrough. We got quite a lot of uh, good publicity locally for the local papers and from uh, the local radio station. We also got a lot of vitriolic uh, response from the Zionists across the world, particularly in America and Israel. We were getting threats for their, their life, threats for their families' lives. Uh, we know where you live, all this kind of stuff, you know. But interestingly enough, that actually galvanised the council. Because we weren't going to be bullied. We weren't going to be threatened by these people. We were phoning it to the Turk open door and telling me your granddaughter was in danger. It actually galvanised us and made us more determined to make sure that we held the line and we were going to expose the Zionists to what they were doing to Palestinians. So the effect that they thought it would have the exact opposite, and it went to the extremes that they even brought in the, the special branch of police, and they brought in the police to explain to us how to open letters because they were frightened they might get letterbox. And they were explaining to us that we need to check our mail. The mail would need to be sifted through the council before we got it because they had reports that the Zionists were posting these letters when you opened them up, they had razor blades in them and they would have ripped your fingers. You know? and, and we just couldn't believe that when you look at these Zionists and, and they, they talk about how peaceful they are and how violent the Palestinians are. This was the type of people we were dealing with. But you'll never see that in the mainstream media. But that, that's, that's how vicious, vicious they were, they were, you know. So we've done a lot of lobbying of the MP, who was, which was a waste of space, a Labour MP. They were, they were, they were all the same booty of goose. They weren't interested in having a go to Israel or what they were up to. Uh, but what was interesting as well is there was quite a few uh, senior officers who were very supportive from the council and gave us quite a lot of uh, support. 2010, when the nine Turkish activists were killed by the IDF, we put another motion to the council to reinforce our original one. And uh, as a result of that one, we wrote to every local authority in Scotland asking them to support the rest of the And that's already starting to. There's now three councils in Scotland, another understanding that there's another one on the board, Falkirk. I'll not take much longer. Another thing that the, the Zionists tried to do was to, because Western Bart's a, a whiskey producing industry, they tried to have a global boycott of any whiskey that was produced in Western Bart's. Mm -hmm. We get these emails from all across America. I used to buy 20 cases of bourbon and I'm not buying any, and you know, all this kind of stuff, you know. And we're bombarding the local trade organisations and everybody, you know. What was interesting was about six months later we checked the figures 
and the sails of Scotch had actually went up. <laughs> so there was a boom to local <laughs> there was a boom to local employment. And again that that learned as a lesson, you know. And it and it, conv it convinced us that we were definitely on the right road. Uh, I'll just finish by saying as I said, Mike was telling me earlier that Falkirk Council are on the brink of maybe passing another motion, which is absolutely brilliant. Well discussing a motion. Discussing a motion. Uh, and I hope that goes well. Uh, if I was to give one message about how we, we managed to get it through, the message would be to people here, if you're going to get involved in activities, is to prepare. Preparation is the key. I think that was the key for us. We prepared ourselves. We knew what the objective was. We prepared. And I think that's how we managed to, to get the motion through. So I'll leave it there, comrades and friends, and thanks very much again for the invite.